I want to talk to you about uh, immigration now, uh, your new brief. Uh, last night on the programme, uh, Chris Filt, the Home Office Minister, told me that the Rwanda bill, will this will go the whole way and stop the boats entirely. It's not going to stop the boats entirely, is it? You have to put all of this in context. So I think it's really worth mentioning that the number of arrivals this year has fallen by a third. The number of people that we've seen come from Albania has reduced by 90%. And that's been through the measures that we have taken so far, the steps that we've put in place, some of that earlier legislative change. You're that not going to make about. the same mistake, are you? Well, You're not going to say I, that I, the EU legislation is going to stop well, every single small boat in dinghy crossing the channel well, immediately. Well, what is critical in all of this, Sophie, is it's a multi pronged approach to resolving this issue. There is no one part of the answer. Um, it all has to come together as a collective. Well, I, I think we are making really good progress. The partnership with Rwanda is the way that we take this to the next level, building on those earlier successes by taking the steps that helps to put those criminal gangs out of business by ending that link between people thinking you can pay a people smuggler, get in a small boat, get to the UK and stay here. That cannot be right. They put people's lives at risk. And all that cost in the asylum system, eight million pounds a day we're spending at the moment, is not sustainable. So you have to layer on all of the various aspects of the package to get to where we need to get to on this. Talking about cost, though, how much has been spent on Rwanda so far? So obviously you've, you've seen the, the figures, um, and the Prime Minister has, has mentioned this in his um, press conference last week, and the Home Secretary has said there was Hundreds. that 100 million pounds startup cost, and there has obviously been some payments made since. But we have always said that this is an economic and development partnership, as well as the migration piece. We want to support it's a lot Rwanda of money on the economic development no one development to have been caught on a plane yet. Well, again, let's put this in the context of £8 million a, lot of a day. of nurses, for, to put it in one context, for example, isn't it? You know, hundreds of millions of pounds would buy us a lot of nurses. It would. That is undoubtedly the case, and other public service workers. But don't forget, we're spending £8 million a day at the moment in the asylum system dealing with this issue. That is not sustainable in the long term. If we do nothing about this, if we do nothing credible about this, those costs will only continue to rise. And that means that, actually, in the longer term, there is less money available for key public services like those that we all want to fund, that matter to our constituents, that matter to people across the country. And so, set against that context of £8 million a day, this is the right investment to make as part of the plan to get these channel crossings under control and to end this terrible criminality that we are seeing. You also spent £22 million housing people on the Bibby Stockholm barge. Is that good value for money? So that is um, a cost projection. It is the case that it could come um, considerably beneath that figure and we are currently sort of reanalyzing and doing some work around those projections. You would expect us to constantly keep that under review, but... We said that we would get on and close hotels. We are closing hotels. We will get 50 hotels closed by the end of January. We're on track. And actually, providing accommodation at a greater scale in the way that we are at Weathersfield, in the way that we are at um, the Bibby Stockholm, is a more effective way of meeting some of those accommodation challenges while we get this issue under, grit, under, under okay. to where we need to get to Who, um, and at a better cost-effective way. Who's got the hardest job? You, at legal migration or Michael Tomlinson at illegal migration? I think they're both really challenging roles and I think they're roles that matter a lot to the public. I think people generally out there in the country want to see us get the channel crossings under control and that is precisely what Michael will be leading on. I'm leading on the work to get net migration to a more sustainable level Let's and also about, dealing actually, with the hotel closures and other aspects. Because Rishi Sunak says that his plan aims to try and reduce net migration by 300,000. The Home Office's Migration Advisory Committee today uh, saying uh, that that's by no means certain to work, uh, that the targets uh, set are largely unworkable, uh, some of the visa caps, for example, have unintended consequences. It doesn't sound like they're that impressed by the scheme and the plans, does it? Well, actually, part of the um, package, we said we want to work very closely with the MAC to get it right and, for example, the graduate route, we think there's work that we can do with them to make sure that the balance is being got right. The baseline is that that package should reduce net migration by 300,000. Although they say that's we, by no means certain. Well, that is what we are working towards. That's what we believe can be achieved through this. But again, the MAC have so much to offer in terms of insight and expertise they're a really important organisation that I will be engaging with in my role. I don't think that it is right that we continue to have such high levels of net migration. We've made commitments about getting those numbers down. And I also think when it comes to work, there are such big opportunities for us to do more. 
helping people in our country, the domestic population, to find work, to get into roles and all the positive benefits that brings for them. There's one other thing I want to uh, ask you about uh, when it comes to uh, migration, because you said today uh, that 132 of the 200 children who went missing from a hotel housing people who you know, came to the UK trying to uh, seek asylum are still missing. I mean, how concerning is this for you? So we as the Home Office work very closely with local authorities and with the police when how, these issues how arise. How concerned are you by that? Of course I'm massively concerned about it. It's impossible not to be concerned about that, as I think any politician, any minister in government, any official who I work with would be. It is very troubling. As I said in the committee, 88% of those missing children were Albanian. There is a considerable number of that from that figure that are now deemed to be adults by the fact that we believe that they've gone over the age of 18. But, of course, there's safeguarding responsibilities and we will work intensively with our partners to try and locate those individuals in the way that I think everybody would want to see. Uh, just finally, uh, Gary Lineker signed a letter uh, calling for the end of the Rwanda scheme. Today, the man who's most likely to be the next chairman of the BBC uh, described that as unhelpful. What's your view? I haven't seen that letter, but obviously Gary Lineker... Um, quite regularly has his own political opinions and he expresses those political opinions, but I haven't seen the letter. Is it and I just disagree with him because, look, you know, I, I knock on doors, I talk to my constituents, I talk to people when I'm out and about supporting colleagues across the country. What people want to see is this channel-crossing criminality come to an end. The Should criminal he be gangs able put out to of express his opinions on Twitter? I think his, the BBC have opinions. sort of come forward, haven't they, and said in previous months that they want to take a more pragmatic approach to that, that they want to sort of deal with those issues, that they want presenters to, to be responsible in the way in which they go about that, I'm sure that that will be a conversation that, that they will have amongst themselves. For my part, I disagree with them on this. I think that this is a key part of the plan to address this issue okay. head on. And I think that it's incumbent on us as politicians to have answers okay. to those big questions of the day.